Hey, welcome back to Ryan Makes Sense, where we talk personal finance, investing, and chart analysis. Today we are looking at platinum. Uh, someone had asked me what's going on with platinum, and I had to say I really, I really don't know. I know what's going on with gold. I know what's going on with silver. I know what's going on with copper. But someone said, "What's going on with platinum?" And I said, "Let me take a check." So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take a temperature check. We're gonna look at platinum. Uh, so. Since platinum is an underlying asset uh, that controls uh, the price of different companies, whether it's an exploration company or it's a company that just tracks the trading prices of platinum, obviously if platinum goes up, we can expect potentially that a company that holds, trades, explores platinum is might they, they might reap some benefits to platinum going up. So we're going to look at the futures of platinum. That's basically just going to give us a level of what to expect for this asset. Um, think of it like when you go to a seafood restaurant and uh, on the message board, it says crab, it says market prices. It's kind of the same thing. We're going to see what market prices are for platinum. Uh, obviously, if platinum tanks, uh, we could see a reflection in different stocks that hold or seek, explore platinum, etc. However, if there's a crab or platinum shortage, obviously, if uh, demand is going up, supply is going down, we could see uh, a nice stock, a nice uh, appreciation in reflect in different stocks or ETFs. So uh, what we're going to do here, again, we're going to look at futures and we'll look at individual companies. I'm going to skip over ETFs just because ETFs typically have a mix of maybe platinum, gold, copper, cash, bonds, etc. We just want straight platinum. So uh, let me go ahead and shrink and bink my head. And I apologize, I am getting over a little cold. I ran uh, four miles, or not four, I ran four hours in Seattle the other day and uh, it was raining. So. Anywho, uh, here we go, just making sure everything is good. So we have our futures platinum here, so we'll come back to that. Now we need to identify companies that, I want to say explore platinum. If a company is trading platinum, they're probably trading, again, gold, silver, etc. Like we see with this one right here, Amark Precious Metals, they trade gold, silver, platinum. That's cool. I want to look for a company that actually has some skin in the game and explores platinum mine, etc. So we have ASA, uh, processing of gold, silver, platinum, engaged in exploration, mining. Okay. So it invests in stocks of companies engaged. So again, this is a mix. Uh, I think we might have to put ASA on hold. We'll just, we'll, we, we may come back to that. Envela Corporation buys, sells all kinds of jewels. Okay. Platinum. This company could benefit because, again, they are holding platinum in uh, physical form, whether that be jewelry, bars, you name it. So we will look at ELA. But then ASA probably trades ES. ASA probably holds and trades ELA. So I think we'll keep, we'll keep on this track. EMX explores and generates royalties, explores gold, silver. Okay, so... Again, with this diverse set of commodities that it has, if platinum skyrockets tomorrow, EMX royalty might be a beneficiary because it does hold platinum. However, it's kind of like holding the S&P 10. You know, platinum is one of the 10. So uh, uh, it's royalties. We'll, we'll just put it on the chopping block. We'll come back to that and see what we got. Uh, ETF, we will pass. It's a basket of shares. Platinum Group acquisition. This is obviously going to go for sure on the list. Granite Shares, Platinum Shares. This is the ETF. Uh, this is just a straight. I think, you know what? We're going to hold, we're going to look at PLTM, but we're going to get rid of. Uh, I think we'll get rid of ELA. No, not ELA. Uh, ELA. We might get rid of ASA if we did put that on the list. Okay. Uh, PPLT, physical platinum shares, physical platinum. 
This could be really good. Again, it's it's uh, it's straight platinum. It's the physical price. So although they're not holding platinum, this PPLT is essentially like trading futures of platinum, which I have right here. But with the ETF, you actually there's probably more tax advantages to doing PPLT rather than the platinum futures. With platinum futures, I believe there is a different tax. Uh, code versus if you're in an ETF, when the ETF buys and share buys and sells different platinum assets, stocks, you name it, uh, you don't have to pay any of those fees. It's kind of uh, baked into the expense ratio. So uh, again, I wasn't going to do ETFs, but we'll come back and we'll find the best ETF and we'll find the best stock just for you guys. Okay, quantum SI engages in development. Okay, protein sequencing. Okay, can be used. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, not not specifically a platinum. Okay, Sibane 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 Stillwater Limited acquisition of platinum and gold. I think this is a yes. Uh, another asset, Scott Platinum Pelling is this commodity launch. It invests in physical platinum and okay. Uh, okay, we'll check that out as well. So we've got uh, one, two, three, we've got two, at least three solid stocks and at least two or three ETFs. All right, so we've got all of the We're going to whittle the ETFs and ETFs one. listed. So we have ELA as an individual stock, EMX, SBSW, and PLG. We then have PLTM, which is an ETF, PPLT, which is also an ETF, and SPP, which is Asset Management Trust. Um, so what I want to do is basically look at the futures and what Platinum has done for the last year and baseline and see what the ETFs have done first because I want an ETF that is going to uh, track platinum but maybe be slightly above it. Uh, so looking at 2024, uh, year to date, let's see. I mean the month, op the year opened at 1017. Right now we're at 980. So for the year we're at a slight loss. So year to date, again, a slight loss. That's that's close to matching what we're looking at. Year to date, again, a slight loss. And SPP, a better than expected slight loss. So this is actually the best looking ETF in terms of returns for a platinum ETF. And we do see it as a platinum palladium trust. Expense ratio, I don't see any... Uh, costs here. Let me just see expense. Okay. We might need to see what they're charging on a monthly or annual basis. I'll leave that up to you. But this one is returning the best so far. Uh, with these other ETFs, there is an expense ratio of 0.6% and 0.5%. So we're going to look at SPP as our main ETF. Uh, and we'll also, let's just zoom this That's as far as we can go. Okay. So now let's look at our individual stocks. Obviously, we want the stocks to be better. Uh, better than 0%. We want them to be positive. And typically because these stocks also hold some gold, silver, other commodities. So ELA, I mean, this. look at this. This, this is going to be big. The company's up 18% this year. And this company, again, buys and sells all kinds of jewelry, diamonds, watches, rare coins. So this is not a specific platinum company. I think I would want to potentially nix this one from the group because again, we're focusing on platinum and this one is a mix. But let's just see what else we got here in terms of other companies. EMX, uh, year to date, they are up 12%. That is fantastic. Uh, this company, 
Explorers generates royalties from metals, minerals, properties. Explorers gold, silver, platinum, palladium, copper, lead, zinc, manganese, nickel, cobalt, molybdenum, molybdenum, and iron deposits. So this one's a little bit closer to platinum or thinking. And they are up 12%. Uh, and then silver. Saban, Sabani, Sabanye, Stillwater Limited. Uh, they are down 23%. However, uh, they are offering a dividend. They are very cheap. Uh, but also sales are continuing to go down. 2023 they did 6.16 billion. 2024, they're at 5.79 billion. They're losing 2.8 billion. So this one is a little bit risky for me. Uh, again, they do acquisition ex exploration of platinum. I mean, this is very risky. If you're thinking of just setting it and forgetting it for platinum, something that's safe, I mean, that ETF would probably be the best. Um, this is the ETF we were talking about. They don't offer a dividend, so it might not even be worth that. Uh, the last stock, wow, used to be 150 bucks. Now it is a dollar. Uh, let's see what they're doing year to date. Year to date, they're up 17%. They don't make any money. Let's see what's going on. Engages in acquisition, exploration, development of platinum. I mean... Ah, okay. They're not making any money. They're not making any money. I'm kind of at a loss here. The company's not making any money. They're losing money. So, this is where I'm going to get roasted because people who own the stock and are emotional are going to say, well, you got to see what's coming up for 2024, 2025. They're going to make acquisition. They're going to purchase lands. They've got deals in the books. I understand that, but in terms of show me, don't tell me facts in front of my face, if someone came up to you and said, hey, we're losing $5 million this year, but next year this, that, you know, no offense, I have to, there has to be some type of transaction. So we're going to pass on PLG, although the company is doing really well, they could be turning their life around. Institutions are adding, but I, again, I just I have to see it to believe it. Uh, we'll go ahead and do one further. We'll see what institutions are doing here. Because um, I know I'm probably passing up on a golden opportunity, but again, they're making $0 currently. Um, institutions currently own 18%. That is old data. New data shows that they actually hold 14%. So that's a decrease, right? But obviously. Okay, we can see it's a decrease. My head is right in the way. It is a decrease down here. Do we have any big... There's no Vanguard or BlackRock yet. No big companies, but I mean, you can see there's a mix of buying, selling, averaging down, etc. You've got banks in here. You've got income funds. You've got the Bank of Montreal. So we're, uh, we're going to pass on this because it just doesn't make sense at the moment. Uh, SBSW, although it is a high risk, high reward here, uh, I do just want to check on something and that is going to be their, uh, net income. Cause that they're losing 2.8 billion, but that could be a, uh, one time charge off. So we're going to find out really quick because it really looks like platinum is, uh, Platinum is consolidating. And what I mean by that is uh, if you're if you're driving and listening, basically platinum is the same. If you would have bought this in uh, the summer of 2005, the futures, the platinum futures, your platinum is worth the same amount. So that's almost 20 years. Well, it's 19 years of just flatness, which is, it's okay. It's a store of value where it's not going down or up, although there are waves, there have been waves to buy and sell. Overall, uh, it's just not, 
not going up. So what's what it really looks like is happening is consolidation in the platinum markets. And what we're seeing with SBSW, Silbean, for example, we're jumping back. Sorry, keep going. Uh, it looks like we have definitely hit a bottom. And I, I'm saying that with some kind of confidence because look at how much demand was here. Uh, currently, the stock is $4.14. It got as low as $3.08 this month of September, but it got bought back up extremely quick. It has triple bottomed at $3.93 within the past year. Uh, also, our buying volume this month is extremely strong. Momentum is ready to flip. Uh, institutional ownership. We're going to go ahead and let this load while we are talking together. SBSW. Okay. I mean, it really looks like it's turning around. However, their sales are decreasing and they have been decreasing since 2021. So again, that comes to, are they, did they sell some of their property? Are they buying more property? Um, <clears throat> let's see. So they're, okay, so this, okay, this is huge because prior to the end of 2023, Q4, they had a $2.4 billion charge off. However, wow, however, this is insane. Okay, Q4 2020, so this is going to be in the first, so the Second half of 2020, they were positive 1.2 billion. First half 2021, positive 1.7 billion. First half 20, I'm sorry, second half 2021, 546 million. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, first half 2022, they were 779 million positive. Second half 2022, positive 368 million. First half 2023, 407 million positive. Second half 2023, negative 2.4 billion. So that is a huge charge off. And you know what? I actually, I actually, actually, actually do like this play because they were extremely profitable up until the end of 2023. And we're seeing some remnants in the first half of 2024. So you know what? I take it back. I like this here and I like it a lot. I like it here. I like it a lot. And that's SBSW. Uh, and looking at their current cash, they have 852 million in cash, total assets 7.3 billion, total liabilities 4.8 billion. Uh, overall, generally healthy, no red flags here. Uh, the only red flag I have and I can see is that their sales continue to go down. However, with that 2.4 billion charge off, that's going to be something we'll see coming up. Their gross margin as of the last data presented was 4.73%. We're going to check on that. Because that's a little bit of a beige flag. Gross margins, 4%, 5%, 17%, 23, 28, 29, 41. Okay, they had some really low halves of low gross margins. However, those two halves, the second half 2023, first half 2024, they were still gross margin positive, which gives me goosebumps because they had a huge charge offs. Prior to the huge charge off, the two billion, two plus billion dollar charge off, they were, they were profitable. They were, I mean, they're still profitable in terms of gross margin, sorry. Gross margins were 41%, 41%, 29%, 28%, 23%, 17%, 18%, 19%, 20%, 20%, from the second half of 2020 all the way to the second half, the first half of 2023. So this is an extremely rare opportunity to get into this company and I'm excited. And if, if what I'm seeing, if you're, if you're with me and you think I'm crazy, if this is a true turnaround institutions own 15.9%, that is old data. If all of this is true, Institutions should own more than 15.9%, right? Currently, they hold. Okay, it doesn't say we're going to have to do this manually, so if you're driving. So institutions hold 117,636,000 shares 
and 869. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that from our overall shares outstanding and that's gonna give us our, our true holding percentage. So just plug in those numbers into a calculator, 636869, and divide it by, divided by, whoops, divided by 707,640,000 shares. Institutions actually own 16.62%, which it is less than 1% of old data. However, that's on a float of 700 million shares. So that is fantastico. That's huge. And do we have any Vanguard or BlackRock representation? Wow, the biggest holder that we see, X, XOR, increased their position by four, about 4 million shares earlier this year. I want to see Vanguard and BlackRock, so just give me a second. I'm actually just going to preload all the, the table here. I needed to uh, register within the cache so that I can search for it, and then it shows up. So I apologize on this craziness. So Control F. Vanguard, Vanguard does Vanguard sold. There was some Vanguard, but they sold uh, BlackRock. BlackRock owns five hundred twenty-four. <laughs> excuse me, thousand shares. Wow. Okay, so there is some big up representation, and the reason why I like this over the other ones is that it's been beat up and battered, and the forward price earnings on this is extremely gorgeous. So SBSW is obviously pick number one for platinum stocks at the moment. Okay, looking at ELA, again, this one is a mixture of different, different uh, commodities. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's running, it's running. Momentum's here, uh, institutions have been buying so this one's already ran. It's already up 18% year to date. I would like to see SBSW. It's it's going to catch up. So <laughs> yeah. So this one's already up. Uh, 2023, they did 171 million in sales. 2024, 158 million. EPS going down, obviously, here. So I don't think we have as a compelling investment as we do SBSW. And I think SBSW is closely more correlated to platinum. Uh, you, we can see revenues are going up, but we can also see the cost of the revenue going up as well. So for example, Q2 2024, they had a gross profit 11 million. Q2 2023, 10.76 gross profit. I mean, that's less than a million in gross profit. They even did less revenues. They paid less though. So, I mean, this company is kind of, kind of growing, but it's, uh, it's interesting. What do we got here? Small buys, nothing really to clap about. Uh, let's look at their balance sheet really quick. What do they got? They got 17 million in cash, total assets, 73 million, total liabilities, 23. That's great. Uh, I mean, this is a attractive stock. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's attractive. Good, good gross margins. They're profitable. Very low float. I could see this one doing really well. Honestly. Uh, it's trading at... Wow. Wow. If you bought this in 1988, you're pissed because it's the same price. So um, is this move going to be much different than the other moves? I don't think so because look at these deep valleys and troughs. You can see right here, this was the deepest... Uh, went on a major run, you know, it went all the way down to 60 cents, as high as about six bucks. And this latest reversal here, I mean, it's not as deep. If you look over here, right here, money flow is also 
I mean, kind of similar. It's the money flow is not as deep as the trough right here, but I mean, it's slow down. So, uh, so this has some more juice to run. Uh, I think we start to see sparks and fireworks if it breaks over $10, which it could. I mean, it really could. It's a very low float stock, very low shares traded. Um, someone with some big money behind it could really move this stock. Uh, yeah, I like this one. We'll keep it. This is number two. We're going to say that as number two. Uh, and that one is getting a mixture of gold, platinum. So you be the judge. Uh, EMX, I don't know if we saw what this was yet. EMX explores and generates royalties. Okay, so this is exploration. Oh, we don't have any data on this one. Was this one? Okay, so typically with Finviz, if, it the, com if the company is outside the U.S., you typically have to go searching for their financials. Uh, what we can see at a very high, easy level, 2023, they did 26 million. Congrats. 2024, trailing 12 months, we're at 32 million. So it looks like we're on pace for this company to do better than they did last year. They are not profitable, but again, they are really close to being profitable. Quick ratios, fine. Shares float, 92 million is quite a bit. Uh, year to date, they are up 12%. So again, EMX along with ELA has already had and seen a nice appreciation in terms of how Platinum is doing. Uh, I think the the needle in the haystack here is SBSW. Uh, EMX, we'll go ahead and see. Oh yeah, so EMX again is trading at 2004 levels. So if you bought this back in 2004, you're probably pretty upset. Uh, we have a potential cup and handle here. We have a potential cup and handle. We have some nice volume here. Actually, this is the nicest volume we've seen in a long time. Uh, I feel forward PE of 182. That means with the same guidance, margins, revenues, EPS as they have currently, they're, they're going to be really expensive next year because this has already ran 12%. So I think this, I think SBSW number one, ELA number two, EMX number three. If you're looking for an ETF, set it and forget it. Maybe SPP, but again, um, it's it hasn't really done much for the year. Your money isn't really working here. If you're looking for something to park your money in, think about the S&P 500. Uh, in terms of platinum plays, if you want to get into something that's beat up, looking healthy, also risky, SBSW, again, their net income is a huge red flag here. However, it was a one-time charge off last half. So if you're risk adverse, SBSW, it's been beaten up really bad. The price earnings is a 5.1, which is amazing. Um, quick ratio is over one. So if SBSW closed their doors tomorrow, they would be able to pay off debts, notes, uh loans etc so i see a lot of reddish up here some very like nerve-wracking items they're barely profitable gross margins but again that's because of their one-time charge off this is the play for platinum in my opinion and extreme demand right here this candle overshadows the last three months and we still have some time left for September. Yes, that's all I can say for SBSW. Do your own research, but um, in terms of platinum companies, this one is looking the juiciest and the one that's looking most poised for growth. Platinum futures overall flat since 2005. SBSW, they're getting their poop in a group. They're getting ready to go. I expect a nice reversal for this one. I'm thinking probably getting back up to 550 by the end of the year. So that's my own personal opinion. You do your own research. Uh, so uh, that's, all, that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you so much for uh, watching and sticking with me. If you made it this far, consider like, subscribe, comment. Uh, let me know if you think of, if you think SBSW is crazy. 
or if you like ELA or EMX, or if you like a different ETF that I didn't go over. Take care. See you soon.